So we're going to have our very special guests come up. And while they do, um, I'll tell you a little bit about the first time I met Mark and Leonard. So we were at um, the legislature. And um, I was waiting and waiting and waiting for my turn to speak. And then Mark and Leonard got up. And Leonard spoke. I've never been so nervous. Talk about a tough act to follow. So please welcome to this stage, Mark and Leonard. Whew, this is nice. <laughs> um, Good morning, everyone, and thank you for allowing me to share my story. Can everyone hear me all right? Good. Okay, great. Um, my name is Leonard Chidas, and I am living with younger onset Alzheimer's disease. I was 50 years old when my primary care doctor, doctor, that was that I was feeling fuzzy, foggy and lightheaded. I was not remembering things. It felt like I was in a haze. I would forget my grocery list. I was not remembering my ATM pin number. I was losing, the, losing my wallet and I was losing my phone. I was um, forgetting things at work. I couldn't remember the alarm code and setting, setting it off in the morning. This was happening too much. I didn't know why I was feeling this way. I actually thought that maybe I had a brain tumor. My PCP told me that I was just stressed and gave me some anxiety medicine. Because I did not know what was happening, one of the things that I really didn't like was that I be began to isolate from friends, family, and even my partner. These were very difficult times. It took over three and a half years to finally get an initial diagnosis of MCI and another six months for full-blown younger onset when I was 54. At that time, I decided to face Alzheimer's head on. Today, I work hard to be part of life. It hasn't been easy. I need to have reminders for everything. One of the biggest challenges is to let people help me. I still want to do the things myself, but now I have to figure out how to do it. And I always, the way I used to do things naturally. Things take, things take at least half to, okay, uh, twice as long before, then it probably, and then I'll probably make mistakes and have to redo and start over. And then I may just forget what I was trying to accomplish in the first place. I do not like to ask for help, but I know that if I don't ask, it often leads me to being frustrated, exhausted, and not happy with myself. I, I work at not getting frustrated, and I focus on being happy. I want to enjoy my life. I have, and I want to live it fully. I get concerned and quiet at times, but I try to remember everything that I am grateful for. I feel that I am fighting Alzheimer's at every turn, but I will not let it take away my joy away. I am going to enjoy my life and I am going to help people around me and I choose happiness. Thank you for letting me have this time and listening to me. Thank you. So my name is Mark Garrity. Um, Leonard and I have been together for 21 years. Um, and it, when it was, when, when the cognitive decline first started, it was really hard for us. Um, 
I, I didn't think he was paying attention. I didn't think he was vested in what we were doing. Um, and it, it was pretty, t I mean, it, consideration for splitting up was on the table. It was really, really tough. We didn't know what was going on. Um, and so after he let his PCP know that he was having these problems and he got into some, some therapy and he was on some antidepressants and anxiety pills and after about a year nothing was changing and he was still isolating. He was still um, having a real hard time coming home from work really frustrated. So um, I started going to his PCP with him which went over like a lead balloon because who is this cocky old guy trying to tell me how to do my job um, because I was real insistent with the doctor that this isn't normal, this isn't right, this isn't this isn't who he is. But and the the doctor did take offense um, because I kept showing up and he got snippier with me as time went by. But finally, he did make a referral to a to a neurologist. Um, but he kept insisting that Leonard was just stressed. It was just stress. So we got to the neurologist, and lo and behold, the neurologist diagnosed him with anxiety and stress, which was really hard because it's like nobody's taking us seriously. Nobody's listening to us. Um, he, he actually did, and they never did. I don't know who this lady was, but this tech did like a, a short little mocha or MMSE on him. And even her, when he was doing the test, he couldn't remember what city we were in. We were in Phoenix here. And um, she stopped and she put her hand down and she says, really? So this was the, the interaction that we were having with the medical community. It was really difficult to, to work past that. It took about a year for us to finally, us, because we're in this together, for us to get a referral for a neuropsych. And that's where the MCI was diagnosed. Um, we finally had somebody listening. Um, and fortunately, we found another neurologist that was um, specialized in, in memory care and um, Alzheimer's as well as any other dementias. And so things have really changed. But it took a long time. Um, I think the doctor, the first doctor, took a while for him to finally come around, and he's got a new PCP now as well, but, but he did finally apologize. But it's really hard when somebody's 50 years old, 51 years old. Ah, it's hard to talk about it. Um, and say that there's something wrong with them like that. It's, it, it doesn't fit the model. It doesn't fit what we're used to seeing. So it's kind of that listening for cues and, and understanding um, more broadly, you know, I get I get on my soapbox, and, and I'm sorry, I'm going to do it here too. But it's like we we check our cholesterol, we check um, our sugar levels, we check our blood pressure, um, and I know they're starting to do it with more senior aged patients. But a quick little, you know, mini mini mocha kind of a thing, you know, the five words and draw a clock. Maybe that's all we need to do. But maybe something at all doctor's visits once a year, like we all get done every time we go in, would be helpful. Um, but it makes it really a challenge. Um, Leonard talked about it not taking away his joy. One of his big joys in life is, is um, being social, um, making a difference. And with this diagnosis, we weren't sure how we were going to pull that off, but I needed to figure out ways to help him be successful. That's kind of my guiding light. Where can, what can I do to help him find his joy? What can I do to help him to, to add value to the world? And so he, he never says no to anything, so I have to run around behind him and tell him we got too much stuff on our table. We can't do it. But, <laughs> so don't ask him. But anyway, no, he will be glad. But, um, we do a lot of this stuff, and we, it's turned into, it all started, the diagnosis for young onset Alzheimer's came down right before COVID, so everything shut down, and we had to, to integrate um, 
new friends because all of our friends started failing away um, because of the diagnosis and then with COVID. So we had to create a whole new life. And really a, a lot of that was um, getting involved, um, advocating for the disease. Um, and so we do a lot of that. And, and I think we've been, that's given back to us so much. I mean, literally, um, we were truly honored because the Alzheimer's Association shipped us out to DC for their annual convention to meet with lawmakers and um, pick it on the White House for CMS to get in their lane and start paying for Lakembi. Um, so that was like a huge experience that we would have never had. Um, so we're trying to, to make the positive out of it. And that's Leonard's doing. I'm, I'm the one that's half got a glass half empty and Leonard's got the glass half full. So it, it's his motivation and inspiration that really helps with all of this. Um, Luckily, we've been able to get um, Leonard started on Lakempi. Um, we, even though it did finally get approved by CMS for coverage, but we, we went with the self-pay approach um, because there just wasn't enough movement by the government. So we decided we'd figure out how to pay for this stuff. And again, um, the stars aligned and and the pharmaceutical company picked up the coverage of the drug for him. We're on the hook for the other stuff, but the drug itself is covered, so that's great news, and CMS will be covering it through Medicare. Um, we want to prolong this as long as we can and slow that progression, because maybe there's, there's a lot of people in this room that, that are working in the, the bioscience industry, and so obviously there's stuff in the pipeline, and so if we can keep him at an early stage, an earlier stage of progression, we hopefully can plug into the next best thing. So we really appreciate everything you guys do here. Um, it's really an honor that you want to hear from us. We're just, you know, some some folks down the block, and, and you guys are the ones with all the initials after your name. So um, it's really an honor, and I really want to thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.